Hi everyone, my name is Memo, this is my channel House Plenty Goodness, and essentially it's a safe space for me to geek out about the thing that I really love, which is tropical houseplants. On this channel, generally I'll do videos talking about some of the plants that I own, some tips and tricks that I've found have worked for me over the years, and also maybe drop a few scientific facts here and there just so everybody gets a better understanding about some of the physiology and how some of your plants will grow and why they do the things that they do and why they respond in the way that they respond. But um, it really does help me a lot as a new YouTube content creator. If you do like this video and you want to see more videos like this, please drop a comment, uh, drop a like down below. Drop a comment as well if you want down below, but do drop a like down below if you like it. Uh, it just gives me an indication that you're liking these types of videos so I can create more videos like this. If you're really into your houseplants and you want to see more videos like this on a regular basis, do consider subscribing because I'll try to bring out a video uh, each week about two to three times a week. So if you want to see more content like that, do consider subscribing. So without further ado, let's go on to today's topic. So what I want to talk about today is smaller houseplants that don't grow too, too big for people that have limited space. So the people that are in smaller apartments that don't have a lot of space to grow those beautiful, big monsteras or philodendrons or anthiums, these big, big aroids with these huge leaves. I know, I know it's something that a lot of people want, but not everybody has the luxury of being able to fit something as massive as that in their space. So they want to have something small, or even if they have a bigger space and they don't want something that's overpowering, they want something that offers that kind of hint of green or a plant or a different color or a different texture. These are the kind of plants that I want to talk about today. And I've got two examples in front of me, both from the same species. So these are both Monstera and you can see the vastly different aspects of these plants. If I'm not mistaken, I'll add the scientific names down below or up above. This is the Peperomia obtusifolia variegata. And I think this is the baby, it's also called the baby rubber plant. I'm not entirely sure. I'll, if it is, I'll put a comment up there as well. Um, and this is the Peperomia caparata or the Peperomia ripple. And I'm not entirely remember now off the top of my head which variant this is, but there's different versions or different varieties of the caparata which can have all these different colors this is a slightly more silvery green color uh, with undertones of like amber i've got another one that's like a fire engine red color there's all these different colors as well so you can inject both texture you can see the ripples on this plant and i'll bring it in a bit closer so you might be able to see it a bit better you can see some of that texture and some of that coloration on the plant or even if you wanted something that's a bit more, so this is more of a thin-leafed peperomia. This is slightly thicker-leaved peperomia, and I'll bring that in closer as well. And you can see it's got some very interesting pink stems and um, yellowy kind of variegation with the green being in the middle of the midrib, so the middle of the actual leaf itself. And you get the variegation on the outside. A lot of people don't always talk about this specific variant of the obtusifolia, which surprised me because it has been a super easy plant to grow. Uh, actually found the variegated version easier to grow than the old green version. Um, and yeah, I don't understand why people are sleeping on this, but very, very cool plant and grew relatively quickly in the right conditions. So the good thing, as I said about these plants, is they don't grow particularly tall. I think this is possibly one of the tallest peperomias that I have. I know some types of peperomias will grow a bit taller, but the majority of them will stay quite small and diminutive. So this might go to about here, potentially, if I let it grow a bit more, and it will kind of bush out a bit more. But it doesn't get huge, huge, huge. I don't know whether or not you might be able to see the Monstera behind me. That's still quite a juvenile Monstera, but it can get absolutely huge and big leaves. And if you don't have the space for it, it can overpower. So in terms of caring for types of plants like this, the benefit about peperomias, and I'll be completely transparent, I know there's a lot of plant YouTubers out there that rave about peperomias. I get the hype. It really wasn't for me. I kind of fell out of love with these plants really quickly. And I think it's because maybe I overlove my plants. I think maybe the people that really like them is because they can go for a while of not having water. Um, although again it depends this is more tolerant of that because it's got slightly more succulent leaves and stems but I find the caparatas and some of the other thinner leaf peperomia they do like to have kind of stable moisture in their soil I will usually have them in my 
chunky aroid soil mix and if you want to know how i make that there it is on my channel as well so go and check it out it's definitely in terracotta as well it helps with wick out some of that moisture because these guys will rot out quite quickly potentially in terms of pests there's not a lot of pest pressures i did almost lose one of these plants when the leaves at the bottom really started like struggling and going and this was actually a plant that was left of last two leaves and i bought it back from the brink of death essentially I didn't know what was causing it at the time, but it turns out it was thrips. So they can be sensitive to thrips. I think they can also be sensitive to spider mites, although I've not had a spider mite infestation with this, and scale and mealy bugs as well because of those stems and that succulency as well. And the problem with mealy bugs and scale, if they get between the nooks and crannies, it can be a bit of a pain to get it out. But um, great plants nonetheless. As I said, don't take the fact that I've fallen out of love with them as an indication that they're not great houseplants. They are, and for the right individual who just wants an, an easy, low-maintenance plant that doesn't isn't going to grow particularly large, these are definitely ones to consider. The reason why I've got some of these still left over is because they're not particularly fussy plants. I've got enough fussy plants with some of my philodendrons and some of my anthuriums. I don't need more fussy plants. These just keep on trucking on, essentially. So really nice, simple plants. If, if you're thinking about getting a gift for somebody who's got small space and they don't know an awful lot about houseplants, these are relatively good, safe bets to give them because it won't overpower their space and it can give them something to um, care for, essentially, but also is okay if it's slightly forgotten at times. But yeah, that's a bit more about the small types of plants. There are other small types of plants that you can have that don't grow particularly large in the space. If you want to know which other ones, and I can maybe do another few videos, I can do like a bit of a series on that if you wanted to know more. So drop me a comment down below and let me know if you've got similar plants to this and what's your experiences with them. Drop it down below. Let's have that conversation. And yeah, I think that's everything I want to say for today for these plants. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And yeah, have a great rest of your day and thanks. Bye.